Listen, game development and really any side project can be pretty overwhelming. Ideas flowing in and out, forgetting what you're working on, what you've already built, and where you're going. In this video, I go over my workflow that I've recently developed to try and help with that. This video is sponsored by Brilliant, but more on that later, and thank you to these patrons over on Patreon. Game development is one of those hobbies that can be deceiving, especially if you already know how to code, which can be sort of paradoxical. You'll be in the shower and suddenly get a great game idea that pops into your head, and you estimate it It'll take you like two weeks to fully knock it out and throw it up on itch.io or Steam. Eight months later, you're suddenly two features deep into your seven feature MVP, wondering really what went wrong. And listen, I think that's pretty natural. I know for me personally, I find it hard to take a step back and look at the whole picture. Take a step back away from the code and the details and look at the game as a whole and prioritize what actually needs to be prioritized. And this is especially true for solo indie devs. So how do you actually stay organized? I actually was and still partially am a big proponent of handwritten notebooks. I have a ton with scratch notes ranging from broad game design to literally specific physics of the Unity engine. Now this is great for thinking through a really specific problem and just scratching it down on notepads, but not really for game design at the macro level and definitely not maintainable. Flipping through pages and notebooks doesn't really facilitate a clean and organized approach. I had to get digital. There are a bunch of online productivity tools you can use, but in this video I used Notion. So I have separate pages for my YouTube stuff, business stuff, and game development stuff. I'm currently working on two games, Muster, which I've talked about throughout my devlogs, and Castlemancer, which is a game I've hinted at and will do a more formal video later on. One of the key things that actually helped me was creating a mock-up of the core gameplay loop for each of these games. Maybe you have struggled with this too, but I know for me, I have a lot of ideas around what sorts of gameplay would be fun in the games that I work on, but little bits of gameplay here and there doesn't really necessitate a fully fledged game. Like I said before, it's easy to get bogged down in the minutia, like what you want the inventory system to look like, or how does crafting work, or the music in certain regions. And that's definitely all important, but those individual features don't really add up to a game. I'm sure we've all played games where we walk around the environment and it's really pretty, but we just sit there for a moment and we say, what do I actually do here? So I've personally realized recently that it's super important to develop a concrete gameplay loop as a guiding principle throughout development. To help with this, I use a free tool called Excaladraw, which is honestly a great name, that lets you create really clean diagrams really fast. And it has that handwritten look, which I also really like. So I export those images and just add them to the Notion page alongside any other mockups and wireframes and the immediate features I need to work on for the MVP of each of these games. Now this doesn't necessarily need to be a Kanban board like I have it, but can just be a bullet list, but I do think it's beneficial to have it all in a single area, regardless of the tool that you use, and actually keep up with it. It's one thing to just write them and forget it, but actually stick to it. And I'm also super guilty of this, but it's something I really want to improve on. You might think you can just kind of think about whatever needs to be done and do it, but that's really what causes a two-month project estimation to actually take two years. It also really helps prevent scope creep, which is the plague of beginner solo indie devs, myself is definitely included. Basically, to have somewhere you go every time you work on your project and just say, hey, what do I actually need to work on today? Or where was I when I finished last time? And I've mentioned Ali Abdal's channel before, but I highly recommend his productivity videos as he has some great productivity workflows for really any type of work. And I want to stress that I'm actually not using this space for implementation minutia that may or may not need to be documented depending on what you want. But for me, I feel less inclined to have all of this sort of micro reporting, but rather have a macro level plan that doesn't change too much and just really follow that. I also like a notion that I can have all the other stuff separated out on different pages. Like for my business Rainy Sunday, I have to file quarterly taxes. I've also been working on redoing the website and reaching out to tour some game studios. For YouTube, I have some video ideas written down as well as a working list of historic and potential sponsors and my general posting schedule. And this ultimately creates a nice clean space that I can check basically every day, even when I'm doing other things other than game development. And this can extend to you as well, where you put personal reminders you need in a personal section, for example, or another project section, instead of juggling it all around in your head or through a disjointed series of notebooks. Trust me, it feels so nice to unload all of that mental
mental baggage of the different stuff you need to work on and just free up some of that mental capacity. To recap on the tangibles, create a one-stop shop for your game dev workflow, whether it's Notion or something else. Actually diagram out your gameplay loop as this will help you implement features restricted to that loop and write out the MVP features in some sort of visual fashion and stick to it to prevent feature creep. But something less tangible is time. When do you actually work on it? Video games are hard to make and take a long time and you just have to be honest with yourself on that front. I've mentioned it in previous videos as well, but don't make this another job unless you actually want it to be. Work on it when you want to and don't work on it when you feel like doing something else. This will ultimately help avoid burnout and keep you going for the long haul. Remember, it's a marathon and not a sprint, unless it's a game jam. For me personally, I work on it in between games going two and seven as Master Yi Jungle and League of Legends. So I hope that general outline was helpful. I'm still refining the actual workflow, but I'm pretty confident in where it's at right now. And if you want to learn some of the foundations of game development based in mathematics and computer science, Brilliant can help. But how? Brilliant.org is the best way to learn math and computer science in a great interactive way. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational math to topics like neural networks, and there are new lessons added every month. With the rise of AI models like ChatGPT and BARD, Brilliant's AI and neural network courses could prove really useful in helping to get a strong foundational base as I'm sure this technology is gonna be around for a while. If you want to continuously develop skills, which is generally a good thing as a professional, Brilliant can be an essential tool, and its bite-sized courses are perfect for busy people. Also, Brilliant's interactive nature makes it more effective and fun when learning and building analytical skills. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org Marcella, or click on the link in the description below. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thank you to Brilliant for supporting the channel. Thank you all for watching. My name is Michael. We do computer science, game development, career advice, stuff like that on this channel. If any of that does sound interesting, consider subscribing. Like this video to help your boy out with that YouTube algorithm. We do a bit of a bad British accent at the end of every video. Check out one of my past videos on my past self would thank you dearly and check out one of my future videos. My future self would also thank you dearly. Comment down below any suggestions for video ideas and hopefully I see you in another one. Bye bye.